I still get messages every single day from people about the QLA method by Dan Pena, you know, the multimillionaire that lives in a castle. So I went to a seminar about a year and a half ago, made a review about it. The review got multiple thousands of views. And since then, people are just asking me about his method and how he does things. And if I have tips for how to be more like the way he promotes. And I have to say, I found that out of all the people that kind of teach you how to be a high performer, how to be more successful, I never found someone who truly gave as practical and as extreme, when I say extreme, I mean just visceral and, and action-related uh, tips as well as Dan Pena. So what I did a year and a half ago after I went to his $20,000 seminar in Scotland was to compile every single thing I learned from him in the seminar, from his book, and from hundreds of hours of videos that I saw of him and just instill it into 10 uh, very condensed, very practical principles that I call the 10 QLA commandments. And the reason for the word QLA is because that's the acronym that he uses for uh, the quantum leap method. That's like his strategy. That's how he brands it. So I thought we'll actually take this chance to go over the 10 commandments and I myself decided to implement them again in my daily routine uh, because I looked at them and they're so freaking effective that I looked at what I was doing before and what I want to do now and I was like, whoa, I don't do this anymore. I don't do this anymore. I don't do this anymore. So immediately uh, these commandments, what they do is they shift your focus both mentally and in terms of actions to things that are extremely practical and things that you wouldn't normally think of. So the difference is that most people, when they, uh, most success coaches, they have things like, you know, read more books or uh, talk to more successful people or work out more or be more specific about what you want. But it's always like tangent, tangential stuff, like stuff that's correlated with success, but not necessarily directly causing success. And what Dan Pena does, which I find really awesome, that's the reason why I went to his seminar, is that he's, he has this no bullshit approach where he's just about action and he wants you to take the most direct actions that will lead you there. So the Ten Commandments are extremely concise, extremely direct, and basically will leverage your success if you follow them. So let's go after them right now and please uh, like and subscribe if you've reached this point. Um, I know usually people ask at the end, but I think it would be a really good thing for you to do right now. So let's begin. First of all, read your affirmations twice daily. Set goals that you cannot achieve in your lifetime. So I condensed these two uh, commandments into one because I saw how similar they are. The affirmations, what it means is you sit down and you begin writing things that make you feel incredible, like they make you feel powerful. And I'll give you some examples of these just from today. So I wrote... I'm a billionaire with more than five major corporations that control many facets of the world. I'm a huge celebrity known by tens of millions of people. I've been on Oprah, Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, and more. I'm married to my girlfriend, <laughs> uh, and we have the best marriage of all time. We're raising five or more kids that are the best and most amazing kids of the world. I'm in the best shape physically a man can be. My body is the kind of body that's shown in movies and paintings of Greek gods. I've helped change the lives of multiple millions of people. I'm considered one of the most influential and positive people in the world. So that's just an example of a couple of affirmations and they're written as you can see in the positive present tense and in the first person like I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Not like I will do this, I will do that. And again, not the negative, like I won't be doing this, but I will be doing this. I am this. And when I write them, I just get super, super, super excited. And I just feel a surge of passion and enthusiasm going over me. So you want to do this first commandment twice a day at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day would be the best. Now let's go to the second commandment. So the second commandment is yesterday's dreams are today's reality, simulation, Practice within when you're without. What this means is, first of all, yesterday's dreams are today's reality. 
Dan Pena basically says that whatever you dream about, if you consistently dream about it and think about it, eventually it will become reality. Just like he dreamed of having his own castle, and then he did, and just like any other successful person, first of all, envisioned what they'll have, and then they actually reached it. And I coupled it with simulation practice within when you're without, which is really, really key because this is something that successful people usually don't talk about. And especially success coaches, they don't tell you to simulate being successful. What that means is, let's say you want to be a really successful YouTuber. So before you're actually successful, already you need to practice, for example, giving really, really good videos. So already start practicing in front of the mirror talking to the audience, saying, hey guys, what's up, this is me from this channel, and really just as if it's already happening. Uh, if you want to be a really successful businessman, again, practice uh, doing the business handshake, practice looking at deals, practice how you would speak, how you'd sit, how you'd behave, which clothes you'd be wearing. So already put yourself in a situation where by the time you reach that situation, by the time you make that video, you do that uh, business meeting, you're already familiar, you're already comfortable because you practiced it, so it feels like you're just doing something you already did rather than something new. Uh, he talks a lot about the anxiety factor and how when we do things for the first time, especially if they're really, really important, we'll get extremely nervous and, and anxious. But if you actually practice it, you won't be nervous and people will think that you've done it before, which is a huge, huge advantage in any situation. So write down the things that you need to practice every day uh, to get to your goal. So things that you would already do if you were successful. Again, like practicing recording videos, practicing speaking in front of a crowd, practicing coaching people, whatever it is. Practice, practice, practice ahead of time so that when the situation comes, you're already completely comfortable because you feel like you've been there, done that. Now, the third commandment is act as if there are no limits to your abilities. Absence of evidence isn't evidence of absence. This is really profound and amazing. And, and I'm like, <laughs> I can't believe that you don't hear that more. Act as if there are no limits to your abilities. That means you... Of course you have limits, like everybody has limits and, you know, because we're human, we're in a physical body, but you want to act as if there are no limits. So when you set certain plans, when you think of cer certain things, you want to plan it as if there's nothing that you can do. So plan more than what you think is possible. So let's say you're a salesperson and you need to do 20 sales calls in the next four hours. Why not set... 30 and see what happens or why not set 60 and see what happens again act as if there are no limits to your abilities you think you can't close that deal well you have no limits to your abilities so plan on closing it uh, you think you're not going to get that uh, loan for your business act as if there are no limits to your abilities of course you're going to get that loan you're going to do whatever it takes and the cool thing is that the the next sentence absence of evidence isn't evidence of absence what that means is just because there's no proof that something is possible does not mean that something that that thing is not possible. And really take a moment to just think about it. Just because something wasn't proven to be possible, that is not proof that it's impossible. And this means that let's say, again, you want to close that deal and there's no proof that you can close it. That's not proof that you can't. That just means there's still no evidence, but you can find the evidence if you try, you know? Cool. So, uh, yeah, just plan things as if you'll be able to do them uh, because you're, you know, there's no limits to what you can do. Now, number four, enthusiasm, Greek God within. So, Dan Pena states, uh, uh, and all high performers are, all high performers are enthusiastic. So, Dan Pena states, I'm not really sure if that's true or not, but you can check it, that enthusiasm, what the word means, where it comes from, is from the Greek god within. That's like the, the origin of the word, because uh, it means the god inside us is about enthusiasm. And he says he's never seen a high performer who's dead or alive that was not highly enthusiastic. And just as you can see me right now, I'm enthusiastically talking to you, I'm I'm, you know, trying to be, I'm not really, I'm not feeling it because I'm 
somewhat tired and it's it's a very technical video but i'm acting as if i'm super enthusiastic so i'm putting out passion i'm putting out energy and imagine if instead of that i was like yeah so this is what it means um yeah uh, enthusiasm is really it's really really important you really need to be enthusiastic now that doesn't mean by the way that you have to be like blah, 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 like super high energy enthusiasm is more like intensity you know you can be very you can be like very uh slow but you can be like this is really really important you have to listen to me you have to follow this this will change your life so that's low energy but enthusiastic or you can be just yeah this is important you have to do this this is really really cool that's like high energy but as long as there's that intensity behind it that's what really really matters so be enthusiastic and every day just ask yourself was i enthusiastic today could I have been more enthusiastic where could I have been more enthusiastic how can i make myself more enthusiastic so on and so forth now number six there are no rules to be super successful you must think outside of the box this is another genuinely incredible uh, commandment that I basically got out of his um, uh, teachings, you could say. And what that means is every day you want to sit down and ask yourself, what can I do that will push me forward that's outside of the box? Because when you ask yourself, what can I do to move forward? Usually you think within the box. So we, until you get into the habit of thinking outside of the box, you need to choose manually to think outside of the box and what that means is let's say you want to grow your youtube channel so you're like okay i need to grow my youtube channel how do i grow my youtube channel so you'll sit down and think hmm, i can uh, you know make more videos i can promote it here i can do this but you're going to think about things that people conventionally do you know i'm going to share it on facebook share it on in forums but when you decide i need to find up a solution that's outside of the box What's cool about it is that when you think of things that are not typically done, things that are outside of the box, there's also very low competition because not a lot of people are doing them. People usually go to the default things, the more common, the, the things that everybody just does. So if, for example, you want to grow a YouTube channel and you decide, I don't know, I'm going to post like uh, flyers all over the city with like a link, like a link you, or a QR code you can scan for my uh, channel, just giving a random example, maybe because nobody's doing that, that will actually lead to a lot more effect. Or, you know, whatever you can think of, if you're a salesperson, you know, how do I close this deal? You can think, oh, I need to call him more and, you know, pester the person. No, maybe you can send him a gift and see what happens. Maybe you can talk to that person's wife or, or friend or family member and see how that might affect the sale. So think outside of the box, because again, these solutions have low competition, so they're much, much more effective because they uh, either are more effective because nobody does them and it's like a surprise to people, or they're more effective because simply people are not used to them and there's less, less competition. <sighs> cool. So, um, number seven. No, number six. Work on your dream team immediately. You're only as good as the men, of course, and women around you. The dream team, what that means is you want to ask yourself, who are the people I need to have around me to accomplish my goals? So if you want to be a billionaire, obviously it would be very, very beneficial to have a billionaire around you or highly, highly successful businessmen you want to grow your YouTube channel, it would be very, very beneficial to have people who are already successful on YouTube that can advise you. So you can only be as good as the people around you. So whatever your goal is, you need to every day sit, da sit down daily and ask yourself, who do I need to find or who can I add to my team, to my network of connections to move me much, much faster to my goal. So whatever, again, you're doing, find, think of who are the people that will really, really promote you, either specific people or like a criteria for the type of person you're looking for and write it down every day and then think of strategies to get to those people. This is really, really crucial 
if you want to uh, move yourself as fast as possible towards your goal. Now, number seven is don't feel good about yourself. Feel good when you have lots of money. So this doesn't have to be about money, but the key point behind this commandment is that oftentimes we begin to move forward and we just stop. And the reason we stop is because we feel really, really good. But we don't deserve to feel good at the moment. So, for example, you make a good sale. You get a video that makes a lot of, gets a lot of views. You know, you, you lost some weight. But you're not really there yet. You're just a step closer. And now you stop to congratulate yourself. And because you feel content, because you feel really good, you're going to stop. And you're not moving forward. So it's important to reward yourself, obviously, but don't stick too long. Too long. So don't feel too good about yourself because then you'll just stop. So instead, you, you, you may not know that, but you don't have to reward yourself. You can actually like, maybe do something small to congratulate yourself and then just keep moving forward. And the longer you, you linger over this feeling of contentment and feeling good about yourself and telling people about how awesome you are and how proud they should be, the more likely you are to just stop. You know, there's a reason that even old Tao and Buddhists saying, they say, if you find the Buddha on the road, kill him. <laughs> or just don't stop to smell the little flowers. Like, move forward. Keep going. Don't stop. Uh, so this is a daily reminder. Don't get too proud. Feel good when you have what you wanted. So when you lost all the weight, when you got all the money, when you... Uh, got all the views or all the subscribers, when you actually reach the, the big goals, not just the, the small um, milestones, then you can feel good about yourself because now you've actually done it. So don't stop like to celebrate that you've climbed half of Everest or, or a fourth of Everest. Cl like Celebrate when you reach the top because now you can rest. Okay, number eight. Think of your exit strategy from day one. The more you investigate, the less you invest. Now, this is really cool. What this means is the more you uh, think about what you're going to do before you do it, the less you have to invest because you've already investigated. So think of your exit strategy from day one. The moment you start something, uh, a YouTube channel, um, a sales call, a business, Start with the end in mind. So start with not just like where you want it to get, but how you want to finish it. So the business, do you want to have a business so you could sell it? Do you want to have a business so you could grow it and take over the world? When you have a, you know, your YouTube channel, what's the end goal? Like, do you want to be extremely famous and just a multi-billionaire or a multi-millionaire? Um, where do you want to finish? Like, where, not just what's the goal, where, where's the end point? And on top of that, the more you investigate ahead of time, the less you'll have to invest. So the more you, for example, you're about to invest money into Bitcoin, or you're about to start a new job, or you're about to start a YouTube channel, or anything like that, a partnership, the more you investigate ahead of time, the less you'll have to invest because thus things will go wrong, first of all. So you'll find red flags, things that you can uh, avoid, and that's less money lost. And also, the more you investigate, you'll also find better ways to do things. So you'll also be more efficient. So investigate, 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 and then when you start, really commit to it. Now, number nine is that's another one that I really, really love. Leverage other people and other people's money to pry open the door to success. What's really cool about that is it really changes your thinking where instead of thinking, for example, the YouTube, this is a really good example. When I, at the beginning, I, just after Dan's Castle, uh, Dan's seminar, I wanted to grow my YouTube channel. So I was just fresh off of the seminar, just thinking along these lines. And I thought I want to grow my channel. So I didn't think, oh, how do I make better videos? How do I share it with more people? I just started calling up people, like literally called up like 30, 40 people that I know and asked them to share my video just straight up on the phone. Hey, blah, blah. Yeah. Can you share it? That would be really cool. Thank you. 
about 80% of the people that I called shared the video. And that's how I got like, you can see at the beginning of the channel, like sometimes 500, sometimes 1,000 views uh, per video at the beginning. <laughs> so, uh, so whatever you need to do, whatever you need to accomplish, outsource it. You know, you want to meet a girlfriend uh, or a boyfriend. And, and so just how, will, how do you want them to look? How do you want them, your, the personality to be? Think about it and then talk to as many people as you can and say, hey, do you know somebody like that? Can you help me meet somebody like that? So whatever you need in life, just ask people to help you with it and they'll feel good because they helped you. You'll be more useful and, and get more stuff and like grow much, much faster. Like you'll only be limited by how many people you got to help you. And you'll also inspire other people to ask for help themselves. So incredible, incredible, incredible. I can't believe that I didn't use these um, these commandments for so long. So I'm, the, you can see why I'm putting them back in order. Um, number 10, a deal is either hot or not. Investigate generalities and always look for a red flag, for the red flag. A deal is either hot or not. What that means is a deal could be a job. It could be literally a deal. It could be a romantic relationship. It's either hot or not. So don't go for things that are okay or that are like sort of yes. Only go for things, I mean in terms of commitments. Only go for things that you can, when you think about committing to them, you you can just think like, fuck yeah. Like I just, I want to commit. This is really, really good. And before you commit, investigate generalities. So generalities mean the general thing that you should be looking for. So, for example, in a relationship, what are generalities? Uh, is does this person come from a good household? Do they have friends? Do they have, do they have a good personality? Uh, are we compatible? What are their dreams? What are their aspirations? Um, are they abusive in any way? Were they abused? Um, whatever you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and the moment you find a red flag, that's why I didn't write a, a red flag or red flags in like. Uh, uh, many, <laughs> um, I wrote the red flag. And the reason I wrote the red flag is because you only need one. So the moment you find a red flag, for example, is this partner, a potential relationship partner, um, would he be a good partner? And then you search for generalities. So you ask yourself, is this person a good pe person to other people? And then you find that for example, this person has a secretary and they scream at their secretary and like verbally abuse them. Red flag. What that means? No. Immediately, no commitment. Don't go into it. Uh, you have a potential deal uh, with a person that's, you know, the one that sells you like uh, an apartment. The person looks off. Something about him is off. You don't know quite what, but the intuition just says, I don't trust this guy. Red flag, cancel it. So investigate generalities and look for a red flag. Always, always, always before committing, committing to something. Uh, you want to go get a job somewhere and you, you, somebody, one of the employees talked to you and they said that the company uh, didn't pay them on time once. Red flag, cut it off. So these are the 10 commandments that I've summarized from Dan's castle. Again, this is incredible knowledge. And if you're not using this at the moment, and you can probably notice that you're not using at least five or six or seven, or maybe even all 10 of them, you need to adopt them now. So what you need to do is to every day at the end of the day, sit down and basically write out these uh, 10 commandments or just copy paste them. And under each one, you want to refer to it. So for example, when you look at the first one about uh, the affirmations, just start writing down your affirmations. When you look at the second one about simulation, just sit down and ask yourself, what do I need to simulate? Like, what do I need to uh, simulate towards my goals to be more comfortable when I actually get there? Or when you get to the act as if there are no limits to your abilities, just start writing down things that you can do right now or that you're planning to do and how would you do them if you had no limits to your abilities, etc., etc. Just go through all the list every day, all 10 of them. And these habits are 
so comprehensive like like mindset emotions actions social business uh, investing everything is in in those and you can really look at all your daily decisions through these 10 so i'm i'm pretty much sure that it, it nothing is missed like that's literally the most comprehensive the most effective uh way to to focus your mind and to to basically act out your days in the most effective way possible. So if you just follow these 10 commandments, if you just every day sit down and, and go back to them and think about them and plan according to them, you're gonna see such massive improvements in your life. You have no idea where it's gonna come from. Like, like you're gonna grow faster than you've ever grown because you're literally leveraging every single possible success leverage that exists. You're, you're using other people, you're using huge goals, etc 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 so use this resource use the uh, wallpaper that i link at the bottom in the description to put it on your phone so you always have you can always see them on your lock screen um, copy them paste them wherever you need print them use them every single day and you're going to see massive massive results and i'm going to update you since i'm going to start using them from today again again after a year and a half i think of now using them which I'm so, so grateful that I uh, am getting back to. So this is me. Uh, if you're new to this channel, you can subscribe for more videos like this and like. You can go on a free coaching call with me if you want. For now, I'm offering the first free first coaching, first coaching call for free. Uh, so you can go to the link in the description and just book a call. You can also uh, buy, buy my autobiography, uh, 300 pages, my entire life story. Or you can get my free ebook, like 70 pages about everything I know about business and on making money online, closing $1,000 sales and more. Uh, just because it's free doesn't mean it's worthless. It's actually very, very valuable. So again, thanks for watching and I uh, hope to see you soon in the next videos. Bye-bye.